Hello everyone, my name is Smurfy, and today I'm giving you a very quick guide on how to play a Holy Priest. I just got my Priest up to 100 and started running Heroics and Raid Finder today, so I thought I would put this out since I am taking a break from my Rest of Druid. Alright, in this guide I'm going to cover Talents and Glyphs, Stat Priority, Gems and Chants, and I'm going to go over a couple macros and tell you a little bit about how to play your class and then um, I will be releasing another video of a heroic gameplay that will help more with the playstyle of the class. Alright, so to start it off real quick, we will talk about my talents and glyphs. So, like I said for my Rest of Druid, everything you, have, everything you do can be changed. Um, everything is situational. Some people will prefer others. But for what I like to run, this is that. Alright, so in your first tier here, you can take a couple different things. Um, Desperate Prayer is what I run. It heals a caster for 22% of maximum health. That's just a quick instant cast. If you are about to die, it'll save you from that. It's more important that you live to keep everybody in your group alive. The other one you can take here is Angelic Bulwark, which will... Um, it's passive. When an attack brings you below 30% health, you gain an absorption shield equal to 15% of your maximum health for 20 seconds, and that cannot occur more than once every 90 seconds. I prefer Desperate Prayer here because you can control that, and it's not on a passive cooldown like Angelic Bulwark would be. Alright, Tier 2. Once again, there's a couple things you can take here. Um, I'm running Angelic Feather. What this does is it just places a target places a uh, feather at the target location and anyone in your group can run over it and it'll make it move faster. Um, or, okay, doesn't have to be anyone in your group, that guy will take that feather from me, that's fine. So anyone on your faction can take your feather and move faster. Good to know. <laughs> um, that This is good for fights that you need to run around, you can throw, help out a couple people, help yourself out. Um, the other thing you can take here is body and soul which will um, when your Power Word, Shield, and Leap of Faith, when you use these abilities, the target's movement speed will be increased by 60% for 4 seconds. As a Holy Priest, you're not going to be using Power Word, Shield, so I don't think this is too useful. And Leap of Faith has a 1.5 minute cooldown. Having Angelic Feathers up all the time, I think, is much more important. Um, Phantasm here is more of a PvP talent, don't worry about that. Alright, third tier, this is one that is completely dependent on how well you're doing with your mana. Um, if you're struggling and running out of mana often, you're going to want to take Mindbender here, which um, is an improved version of Shadow Fiend, and when you cast it, it'll just help return mana to you. Um, if you are okay on mana, you're going to want to take Surge of Light. What this does is your healing spells and smite have an 8 chance. 8% chance to make your next flash heal instant cast and cost no mana. Um, with this, you can basically just get free heals. It's pretty simple, and you don't even have to think about it. It'll just be a little thing that pops up on your screen. Click a flash heal. Don't even worry about it. Um, Power Word Solace, you can also take. Uh, it does help with mana, but what this does is it replaces your... Um, what is it called? Holy Fire. It replaces your Holy Fire. And what it does is, not only does it do damage, it now restores 2% of maximum mana on a 10 second cooldown. And it will also heal a nearby injured ally for 100% of the damage dealt. Or if it heals you, it's 50%. So that's good if you are one of those people that likes to actually help DPS the boss. You can throw that onto that and help with the healing. Or help, help with the damage and it also heal and return mana to you. I'm running Surge of Light though because it's more of a passive, quick flash heal whenever I need it. Alright, this tier for level 60 talents, um, completely situational, honestly doesn't even change anything you do. Nothing here is really used in current content. The only thing that would really make sense is Void Tendrils when there's a lot of adds and you get aggro quickly, you can root them into place. Um, if you want to take these other ones, that's completely fine. It does not affect your playstyle by, by much. All right, next here, um, there are really only two things I would recommend here. Twist of Fate, I would stay away from because even though it does increase, uh, fifteen it increases healing done by fifteen percent 
for 10 seconds after healing someone below 35% health. The way I see it, you're not going to want to let anybody drop below 35% for that to be useful. Um, Divine Insight, your heal and prayer of healing have a 40% chance to make your next prayer of mending not trigger its cooldown and jump instantly. So that's easy, just not even worrying about it. However, I like to have a cooldown because without power infusion right here, you won't have a healing cooldown. And power infusion inf infuses the priest with power for 20 seconds, increasing haste by 25% and reducing the mana cost of all spells by 20%. So this is going to be just a healing cooldown. I prefer that over having passive abilities just so I can have some control over what's happening at the present time. Okay, for this tier, tier 6, you have basically two options. Stay away from Divine Star, the, the healing it does is uh, lackluster. Um, Cascade will launch a Holy Bolt that grows in power with distance, healing an ally for a certain amount and then bouncing to additional allies four times in a 25 man group that's, that's really really good healing. It bounces, 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 bounces and pretty much heals everybody. Uh, that's good when you're not are on fights that you're not going to be able to stack, which I find is a lot of fights in High Mall at least, so I prefer to run Cascade. The other option here is Halo, which just creates a ring of holy energy around you, so it's basically like it radiates energy that does healing to everybody in within 25 yards, and the most healing done is at its um, farthest range at 25 yards. But like I said, that's only going to be useful if you're relatively close, so everyone would have to be in 25 yards to make that useful. I like Cascade because it's going to bounce, bounce to anyone, even if they're spread out. And for tier 100, um, I'm not even going to talk too much about these. Word, words of Mending is the only option here. These other two are just way behind right now. Words of Mending, what it does is your healing and shielding spell casts grant you a stack of Word of Mending. When you gain 10 stacks, your next targeted healing or shielding spell also casts a Prayer of Mending at them. So it's another just extra Prayer of Mending, and what Prayer of Mending does is it um, puts a shield on someone and when they take damage they'll be healed and it'll bounce to another player. So having two of those going around and not even have to worry about it is really, really nice. Okay, so Glyphs. Um, there's actually a few that you can run here. The ones I am liking for most fights are going to be Renew, Glyph of Deep Wells, and Binding Heal. So what Renew does is it heals for 25% more each time it ticks, but its duration is reduced by 3 seconds. Normally that would be a problem, however, since we did get Enhanced Renew here, it basically nullifies the reduced cast time, so you'll still be able to apply that the same as you always have been. So that'll just increase the damage, or sorry, the healing done, and that's really nice. Um, Glyph of Deep Wells increases the total amount of charges in your Light Well by two. I mean, that's always going to be useful. You're going to want to have Light Well up during every boss fight, so that's great to have. Glyph of Binding Heal, this is one that I would say you could mess around with and try a couple different things. Um, specifically, for this one, what you will be, um, what it does is your binding heal now heals a third target within 20 yards, but it costs 35% more mana. So, binding heal is one that you don't normally use too much, but it might be able, it might be useful for saving you and your tank at the same time, as well as a third person that might be taking damage. So, that can be a useful third third uh, glyph. Um, the other options here, one would be Circle of Healing. Uh, I don't like this because it does heal an additional target, but its mana cost is increased by 35%. I think that's a little excessive. It's okay for the Binding Heal to cost a little bit more because you're not going to be casting that a lot. Circle of Healing is something that you're going to be casting very, very often. So, at a, at a certain point when um, mana struggles are irrelevant, this will probably overtake this one. But for now, I'm going with Binding Heal. Um, the other um, glyph here, 
which I do not recommend, but some people do like it, is Prayer of Mending. The first charge of your Prayer of Mending heals an additional 60%, but it has one fewer charge. So you'd only be putting four charges up. Um, I mean, it, it, it's a good for, like, if you throw it on a tank, it's a quick bonus heal to them. But being a Holy Priest, you're probably not going to be too worried about the tanks. You're going to be worried about the group, and having five charges going around will be better for your HPS all around. Um, as for minor glyphs, none of these really affect your gameplay, so don't worry too much. I'm, I'm running Angels and Confession if you're wondering. I don't even have a third one. Okay, so moving on. Your stat priority. So, as a Holy Priest, um, let me show you real quick here. Our number one stat is going to be multi-strike and that is because of divine providence which says you gain 5% more of the multi-strike stat from all sources and it also increases the damage healing and absorption of your multi-strikes by 20% so basically multi-strike is something you're gonna want to be stacking as much as you can um, after that you're gonna want to worry about um, how much spirit you have get it to a comfortable amount so pay attention to how your man is doing on fights if you're running out before the fights over you might want to worry about getting a little bit more of that um, if you're not familiar yet spirits only available in a few different slots spirits gonna be in necklaces cloaks rings and trinkets so if you find any of those items that do have spirit on them you might want to consider picking them up just for the extra spirit it has. After spirit, uh, to a comfortable amount, you're going to want haste. Haste is... there's no more breakpoints in this expansion, that was one of the things that changed, but still having haste means more more ticks, more healing on your renew, um, quicker heals, it's just overall really good. After that, mastery is going to be... it's going to you're at Mastery's Echo of Light, sorry. Mastery of Echo of Light, and what it does is just adds a little bit of uh, hot healies. So when you heal someone, like I'm going to heal myself, it's going to add Echo of Light, which heals right there's 1230 every three seconds off of just one heal. So Mastery is useful, but not as useful as the other stats. Um, after that, anything is fine. So once again, multi-strike, spirit to where you're comfortable, haste, intellect, mastery, anything else. Alright, so with that said, gems and enchants. Um, there's only a few slots that you can actually enchant anymore. That would be the same ones that I just mentioned that have spirit. It's going to be your necklace, your cloak, and your rings. So I don't have my necklace and cloak currently enchanted because I haven't learned those yet since I just hit 100 and I haven't learned my um, enchants for that yet. But I did manage to get my rings enchanted. You're just going to get multi-strike. Put multi-strike in any slot you can with enchants. And also, I haven't put a gem in this because I just picked this up but you're going to also want multi-strike gems. So basically gems and chance just throw in any multi-strike you can. That's all you got to do. Okay, so with that said, um, there aren't exactly any macros that I could really recommend for priest healing specifically. All I'm going to say is that I do use uh, mouse over healing for all of my spells so I don't use any healing add-ons I just use mouse overs and of course you should even if you don't use mouse over healing you should use a mouse over leap of faith or have that macroed somewhere in case someone's in trouble and you can pull them to you um, other than that though there's not any real macros to use um, we only have one cooldown if you even take power infusion if you don't take power infusion you really don't even have any healing cooldowns so you don't need to macro that into anything just use that when you find it necessary um, alright so with all that said there's just one thing left to do and that's uh, 
show you how it works. So I'm going to cut this video here and hop into a heroic. I'll see you guys very soon. Thanks for watching.